Welcome, welcome. So first episode back. Welcome. Let's get the show started. And we will be um, sharing why you only see two sisters up on the screen. Yeah, right? let's, let's address the elephant in the room. I'm so sorry if your favorite girl is not here. Right? <laughs> right? Hi, everyone. It's Vanilla. And your girl, Nair. And together, we are the Soul Sisters. Welcome to Shut Up and Thrive, the podcast that will inspire you to live your best life. With each episode, we'll bring you fun, introspective talks, inspiration, and a whole lot more. So are you ready for all the things that will make you want to shut up and thrive? Let's journey together as we jump into the conversation. Hi, Naya. Hey. Nice to see your beautiful face this morning. Nice to see you too. Looking all springy Biffy. springy yes I'm sp- and i'm looking like i'm about to go do a workout Are you? which hopefully i got my pilates uniform on Ooh, your yoga yes. have you been doing pilates is that what it is no i just put this on hopefully to inspire myself to do it today either pilates or yoga i don't know we'll see what i'm in the mood for I'm in a mood to go for a swim in the ocean. That's what I'm in a mood for. I'm, I'm always in the mood for that. Always. Um, isn't this like spring equinox? The whole mm-hmm. thing start. Is it oh. today that it started? Or? No, I think it's either the 20th or the 21st. Oh, okay. That's tomorrow or the day after. Cool. So, yeah, like I said, it's so nice to see your beautiful face. And I'm so excited that we are back and we're going to be recording and thriving can't wait to be interacting with all our swap fam out there so that's right welcome let's get the show started welcome welcome so first episode back how do you shall we how you really feel yeah i feel good i feel good to be back i'm happy to be recording like i said in the past i I don't know if i ever said it on here but it's kind of like therapeutic to have these kind of sessions and dive deep into different topics so i'm excited i'm excited how about you same here definitely excited can't wait to you know talk thrive i miss you miss you too so coming back it's like we'll be catching up Mm -hmm. and i know we have a lot of nice topics lined up i feel like i'm back on my routine again yeah you know this is part of our routine like our weekly routine and we kind of fell off a little bit, but it feels good to be back. And we will be um, sharing why you only see two sisters up on the screen. Yeah, right? let's let's address the elephant in the room. I'm so sorry if your favorite girl is not here. Right? <laughs> right? But yes, so um, in this new, I guess, season of SWAT, um, I guess we'll take it season by season, right? Just like a beautiful earth has seasons. So do we as people... And our creation, Shut Up and Thrive, also has seasons. So in this new season, um, it is just the two of us. However, Claudia did write, you know, our SWAT fam a letter. So we're going to share that now. All right, guys, I'm going to read the letter that Claudia has written. So here goes. Dear listeners, I am writing to you today with mixed emotions as I announce my departure as one of the hosts of this podcast, Shut Up and Thrive. It has been an incredible journey, and I am grateful for the opportunity to have been part of your lives for this time we've shared together. When I first started hosting this podcast, I had no idea what to expect. But with your support and encouragement, we have grown and learned together. We've laughed, cried, and celebrated together. And I will always cherish the, the memories we have created. As much as I have enjoyed being your host, it is time for me to move on to new challenges and opportunities. I leave this podcast in good hands, and I am confident that my successor will continue to provide you with the same high-quality content and engaging experience discussions you have come to expect. I want to thank you all for your loyalty, enthusiasm, and engagement. Your feedback and support have been invaluable, and I will always be grateful for the privilege of being your host. I encourage you to continue to support the podcast and to welcome my successor with open arms. Finally, I want to express my 
deepest gratitude to the SWAT sisters for their hard work and dedication to making this podcast a success. Their efforts have been the backbone of our podcast community. Thank you, Claudia, the passionate one. So I just want to mention that Claudia does mention having a successor come in, but we decided to just keep the podcast, just the two of us. It didn't feel right to kind of bring someone else into it and thought that, you know, continuing with just the two of us Mm -hmm. was, was the best decision. All right. Now back to regularly scheduled programming. All right. So hopefully that um, sort of addresses us to being here. One thing we know for sure that's not going to change is the thriving topics, conversations, and engagement with our audience, our followers, our friends. And, you know, we like to refer to you guys as a SWAT fam, right? So. That's right. So jumping in to today's topic, seeing that this is our first episode back, sort of like a new beginning. Also, it's spring, which is technically our new year. Mm -hmm. We thought we would get into some motivational, inspirational talks. And today we're going to be talking about goals and success and happiness and just that whole idea of striving to achieve things and, you know, being successful and being happy people, like what that means to us and what it takes to sort of do all of that. That's right. And on that note, um, you know, guys know we love our Google's definitions right. of goals. BFF, Google. Happiness. And um, the Google definition of goal is the object of a person's effort or ambition an aim or desired result. Yeah, that's pretty black and white to me. Mm-hmm. Something, an object, something you're going for, using ambition and effort, right? Mm-hmm. A result, something you're going after, like the end, end point. That's how I see it. I like how it's a goal, success, happiness, kind of flow, right? Have a goal. Yeah, you would, you would hope. And then to eventually be happy. Be happy. But is that really is how that it really? is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Or what is, is it happiness, it? success, goals? Have you been setting any goals lately? Uh, I think over the years, how I view goals have changed. I think as you mature, obviously you want certain results, basically, is what a goal is. But then you also start to learn that things don't always work out the way you want them to. Not necessarily that I don't give myself goals and I don't give myself things to reach for, which I do and I always do. But I think I let I'm trying to let go of the expectation part of the goal. You know what I mean? You mean usually maybe when you set a goal it was very strategic, but now you're kind of laid back a little bit on very very yeah. but you know that setting a goal well, in my case, I know, you know, when we set goals, it just helps us achieve what we want mm-hmm. safer think, in a safer, more practical, rational way. I think having a goal for me is like a reminder that like keeps me on track mm-hmm. to like not be a lazy person. Because by default, I I'm a lazy person. You know, mm-hmm. I like to chill and relax. You know what I mean? But chilling and relaxing is not going to advance you in your life you know what I mean so the goal is sort of like that little reminder in the back of my mind and you know when we used to do our self-esteem programs with the kids we used to go heavy on smart goals remember yeah we were like on point with those goals so I think for a while I really like adopted that whole process of setting and achieving goals. And to some extent, I still do. I have a little bit of that where, you know, I know in order to attain the things that I want, I have to be specific in what I want. Like, how am I going to achieve something if I don't know exactly what it is that I want? So some of that still kind of flows with me. But again, you can write things down, you can say things all you want, but if you don't take action, then they're not going to happen. So my focus is more on being an action-oriented person rather than, oh, I got to make sure I fill out this sheet correctly. Like it has to be on point. I have to, no. And then also I have to remind myself that 
it's the journey, not the destination. I know very cliche, but it really is the journey. You have to pay attention to the journey. You have to focus on the journey and not the end result. So I always have to keep reminding myself of that. So yeah, I guess that's my take on goals. How about you? I would pretty much say the same thing. Um, And I don't think I was ever a person to set many goals or put it in my brain that I'd have to, you know, like set goals to achieve certain things. Um, I always like to move with the flow, go with the flow. But I, you know, growing up, I did learn that setting goals is definitely important when you have, for example, specific things that you want to achieve in your life. So that's when I tend to say, okay, maybe we could be a little bit more smart about this goal by giving myself time frames, right? And describing what I really want, writing them down on paper. Uh, but it's still pretty a mellow flow of that whole achieving my goals. Um, trusting the universe, I guess, is part of achieving my goals as well, rather than just fighting to keep with like, a plan, you know, like you mentioned, we were big on smart goals, making sure it was very specific, uh, achieved, and give it a whole time. And like I said, I never gave time to my goals, but I do have them written down on paper. So I don't know if that's a goal or a dream or a plan. I guess a little bit of both, oh, all yeah. three. Okay, can you think of one goal that you say you worked really hard on and you achieved, like Recently? in the past? Oh, in the past? Oh, recently. No. Um, yeah, recently. Give us like a recent example, I guess. Um, I try to think the set goals to keep up with decluttering, for example, my personal space or books and things like that. I told myself, maybe so. it wasn't so much a goal, but like a plan to remove things that I haven't been using for a long time, different things like that. So I don't know if that's a goal. That's not really a goal, but that's again, more of a habit, I think. And again, we didn't we didn't write down that we my goal habit, was but... to keep up with that habit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, what were some things you did, and do you feel like you achieved it? Personal life um, would be like I said, working on my personal space to make it. So more... when yeah, when you think of like goals, so people usually will have like career goals, relationship goals financial goals, health goals, health and wellness goals. I think those are probably like the top, right? Mm -hmm. Like family and relationships, money, career. Then I could could step into the money, the financial aspect of it. Um, Yep, I did set some goals to save more money than I was saving before or to invest weekly on or monthly on certain things. So yeah, small goals like that. I have been setting a lot of small goals when it comes to financial financial freedom. I say. And have you been finding it like easy, difficult? And what, if it's easy, what makes it easy? If it's not, then what's your challenge? The, what's making it easy is by going to the, when you dedicate to something. So for example, if I want to dedicate to my goal, if I want to set schedule, like, so I guess make it achievable. Like automate it? Time. Correct. Just make it something that, if it's to save more money, just make sure that it's automatic set to come out, you know what I mean? Rather than me having to remember to go make the transfer or whatever. Logging into my accounts and either credit cards or bank accounts and making sure that I'm putting a budget into place and making sure how I'm like keeping track of my budget in a way have been a goal to help. That's been helping me with my financial, future financial goals. Nice. Any goals that you've been finding like a challenge? Yes. Oh my god. A goal <laughs> to be physically fit, yeah, like very I was toned, say that toned too. dance body that I want is has been the biggest challenge because I don't set a goal to not eat so much or to not splurge when it comes to things like that. So maybe those are some goals for the future that I wanna do is instead of mostly financial, maybe focus on healthy goals, mm-hmm. fitness, I mean, health, fitness goals. You can have all those have goals. That. For me, like I have, that's a challenge for me too. So I agree with you there in terms of like setting, I'm good at setting goals when it comes to like health and fitness. I don't really set goals with my eating habits. Cause I just, I've told mm-hmm. myself that I'm just going to do my best to eat healthy and just purchase things that are healthy. But 
to exercise, yeah, I'm good at writing down my exercise schedule. I'm good at finding the tools that I need to help me exercise, you know, the cute outfits, the workout programs, the schedule. Like I got all that down, but my motivation, um, inspiration. Yeah. To follow through when it comes thing. down to like, okay, now you wrote it in your planner that you're going to work out today. Now is the time to work out. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At that moment is where I feel yeah. <laughs> because I choose not to do it. Do you think it's because you're not actually setting a goal that you have to me? Because it's a lifestyle for you at this point. You know, I exercise, I have these things Mm -hmm. because I want to be good. But like Mm -hmm. when you actually set a goal, you tell yourself, I'm going to be 140 pounds. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to have toner legs. It could be that. You're right. It could be that I don't have specific goals. Like I remember when I was, remember like a long time ago, we ran that 5k for my birthday. Yes. That was I had a specific goal, right? Perfect I had to reach example, I, yeah. I wanted to reach a certain I wanted to run the race in a certain time. So I had to make sure that I was, you know, training enough to be able to at the day of the race, you know, meet or beat my time. So that could be it. And another thing too is when I'm accountable to other people, I find myself able to achieve those goals so like remember when we did our fit and fabulous challenge i do know girl and that's my problem because i don't have another people person (laughs) (laughs) yes and that's and i've been trying to like get myself out of that sort of mentality where if it's for somebody else like i don't care i will not miss i won't miss a deadline at work i won't miss because it's for other people but stuff for myself I'm just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, you know what I mean? What's one day? And then those days add up. And that's where I've been finding myself. Like I started the year strong with my whole workout routine. I was tracking, I was doing good. And, you know, recently I've kind of been falling off. So I'm like, what is it? Like, I still have that same drive and desire to be healthy, be fit, be toned. I love how I feel after I work out, but when I'm just, I don't know, like if I had a long day at work or I'm feeling tired or, oh, cause I usually work out in my basement. Oh, the basement's too cold. I, I don't want to wait for it to warm up. You know what I mean? Like it's always an excuse. So it's like, how mm-hmm. do we take ourselves from that mentality of just overcoming that, th- those excuses? And I don't know, like so it, it's either something in you has to change by yourself. Like you have to make that change or you know, unfortunately, a lot of us don't make the change until something scary happens to us. You know what I mean? Until we ha- we're faced with like health issues, then we drastically change our lives, which I don't want to get to that point. You know what I mean? That's why I want healthy living, you know, physical activity to be part of my life. But yeah. I know I'm speaking, for, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm also, I know I'm speaking for a lot of people because I know there are a lot of people out there that probably go through the same thing when it comes to like health and fitness like we'll be motivated in the beginning and then it just Mm -hmm. fizzles out that's that's my thing like it's finding whatever motivation or what has to like stay accountable consistent you know to set a goal to exercise i always drop off too i'm never i don't even want to do it so i don't even think i'm really setting real good goals because it's like Mm -hmm. i don't really want to go to the gym you know, and that's the thing. Well, like, I, excuse, like, oh, I walk every day. I lift on Wednesdays, like boxes or whatever. But still, um, and I think that's the thing is like where we might me- be making ourselves do things that we don't quite enjoy. So how do we find things that we enjoy that also give us the results that we want? Mm-hmm. And I honestly, I do enjoy lifting. Because when I'm in, like, one, me, it's getting there. Yeah. Because once here. I'm there, once I'm working out, once I'm lifting, once I'm Especially running, like, when whatever I'm doing. Yeah. Even when I'm in the moment, I feel good. I like it. I enjoy it. I, like, I feel myself, like, you know, in the I zone. Like I feel it, yeah. good. So how, why can't I, that feeling, overcome my laziness of just wanting to, like, <laughs> relax and not get up? Mm -hmm. and go to the gym like why is that feeling not stronger than the other feeling like that's what I always like sort of because I I already know what it is it's not that I don't enjoy what I'm doing it's that I enjoy relaxing more than I do (laughs) working out I don't know relaxing yeah yeah 
yeah like I don't understand but yeah so that's the negative side of goals yeah it's I guess building that habit but I feel like there's been times where I've built that habit and I was doing it consistently Mm -hmm. and then I just I think I have to have like those goals back to back to back to back like how we did that fit and fabulous challenge Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was like what three months I think Mm-hmm. and then we stopped doing it so I think that's uh, we would have to start a new yeah. one you know what I mean I have to constantly I we, be doing those things correct and what we did we do back then was we did set goals versus right now you just you're on mix just saying yeah I want to be physically no I set goals I want to do it but do you set like yes goals for like I want to be a specific weight or I'm gonna no, tone because I don't care body. about weight like, I don't I care do about weight. I don't care about You do it just to feel, is it the energy? The Okay. So I, I do it because even, I know it's good for me. Yeah. Like, I'm happy with my body. I'm happy with my, I don't even know how much I weigh, like, but I, I know, like, <laughs> I'm happy with the way I look. And I yeah. guess maybe that's another challenge for me is because I'm someone who naturally just has, I wouldn't say fit body, but you know, I'm a lean person and I don't feel like I need to lose this or gain here. You know what I'm saying? Like, of yeah. course, everybody can improve a little bit here, a little bit there, but I'm like, I don't feel like my body is at a point where, oh my God, like I let myself go. You know what I mean? Yeah, so again, like I'm not that's, that's another like clothes. Like some people have motivators. Right. We just, that's not, we'll that's another challenge for me is you know i think i look good and so you do like, and that's my problem i'm like okay if i wear these jeans like i told you catch me in the clothes why do i need to go to put on exercise clothes right and i was like why do i need the gym i look good but I right. feel like that's not the point though mm-hmm. with the point is um maybe i'm saying like going back to why we don't stick to a plan to you know keep up with a routine is not setting that specific goal for a specific target because we don't think we need it. We just do it to feel better, to feel good. Um, yeah. So I think I do need to set specific goals for maybe three months at a time. It's going to be the glutes. And then, mm-hmm. you know, in the next three months, it should be a marathon maybe that I'm, you know, running for, mm-hmm. get the legs going and the arms or whatever. And when but, you think about it, it's really like four goals a year or four challenges a year if you do three month challenges. Mm-hmm. So if you can think of four different challenges that you can do for three months at a time and, you know, involve others if that's your thing. But and that right there is your goal. So now let's try to make it, you know, work. Yeah, and make that, it smart. That's a, yeah. that's a whole year of you being consistent with your physical body like mm-hmm. physical activity so hmm, that's just an idea that just came, came right now. Yeah. let's do it yeah. we're about okay we just finished the first quarter of the year we're in this new phase we're about to start this new quarter april may june what are we doing let's do it yeah like what's our goal gonna weather? be when is it really beach water the next three months june. probably right yeah so what the beach body challenge that, to have that bikini bikini friendly but I'm I'm also the person that says summer is gonna get whatever body I give it, you know. <laughs> so I'll exercise if I want. I eat crazy if I want. But the older I'm getting, I realize that I do need to set more specific goals to make sure that I stay healthy and keep up with the energy and don't get so lazy to just want to relax and you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel you. But there's this one thing, though, in your life, besides being physically active, that you know you need to set goals every year. Um, Anything well, specific? Yeah, financial goals. I, I have to set them every year. Every year. That helps me, like having a budget and having like how much I know I'm going to save and, you know, how much I'm going to spend. That helps me not think about it. Like when I get paid mm-hmm. or month to month, I already know how much is being saved. I already know how much is going towards this. I already know like what financial goals I have this year. Like, again, I've talked about this in the past, but my husband and I, we have our yearly meetings where we talk about, okay, what do we plan on doing this year? How many vacations do we want to take? Do we want to buy anything big? You know what I mean? And so we plan that at the beginning of the year, set our budget. So it's just, you know, we don't have to think well, about it. It's mm-hmm. already set. So that's something I know that I do and I'm probably always going to do. And it just makes finances a a lot easier. And like, granted, it's not perfect because things always come up. You know what I mean? Unexpected, what do you call it? Unexpected uh, 
events happen and you have to pay for this and pay for that. But that's why you have to have an emergency fund and you know what I mean? Things like that. But or unexpected trips just pop up, you know? Yeah, that can take you off track even. Yeah. To save money or to exercise. You're like, well, I'm going on a trip. And you go for a week, come back and you don't go. You don't fall back into your regular Throws you routine. Off. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's something I know that I always want to set and make sure that I'm on that because I one thing I don't stress about is money and granted I could always be making more I want to always be making more I'm going to push to always make more but I'm not going to stress about that yeah how about you very nice um same question I asked you Mm -hmm. like I said I'm not a big goal setter (laughs) Um, I'm more like if there's things that needs to be done like I know there's a task or there's something I want I'll work on it Mm -hmm. So to me, that's like, I have a goal. I have a goal because there's something specific that I'm working on it. But it's not like you every first, no, first year, first of the year that I'm trying to make sure I have things set financially or everything. If things change, for example, if I was to change career or if I was to get a raise, then I'm like, oh, I'm going to set a goal now because I got a raise. I'm going to set a goal to save this more money. But things will have to like pop up, come up for me to actually set a goal versus a lot of people that I know they've set goals because they know they want to achieve something, but they'll set the goal as a reminder that they have to do it. Or, or they'll set they the goal. It. Yeah. Or as a motivation to get what they want. Like, yeah. let's say you, you want to buy a house, but let's say your credit score is not where it needs to be. You yeah. know, working on that credit score can help you achieve that house. You know what I mean? Yes, very good explanation for that. So transitioning into from goals into success, the word success, because, you know, it ties to goals. You know, once you achieve a goal, you achieve success or Mm -hmm. is it the opposite? Because you're successful. Well, you success achieve goals. is after you achieve it, right? You accomplished what it is that you want. And that's your opinion. No, as far as goals go. Well, let's see what our BFF Google says. So the definition of success. success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose, the attainment of fame, wealth, or social status, or a person or thing that achieves desired aims or attains fame, wealth, etc. So a person or thing can be a success. Success could be also the thing, the accomplishment itself. So like I said, you could be be successful because it depends how you view success. You think success is after you achieve goals. I don't think. I'm saying like if, if I'm going to think about the word success when it comes to goals, to me it's when you've accomplished whatever it is your goal is, that now is, a, is success. Like it's a okay, success let goal. me play devil's advocate here and say people can be successful without achieving goals because they are kind-hearted, they are loving, they are giving, they are happy. Mm-hmm. So I can look at someone who maybe never never saved ten thousand dollars in their account they never ran a, a, a marathon they never you know had a dream job but throughout their lives they were loving giving responsible human beings you know yeah. never had to fly would that person would you consider that person's life a success they lived happy throughout their whole lives even though they didn't ch- achieve like this wealth fame or all that's these me right here right? that's me so I consider myself to be successful and I don't really set goals, Yeah, um, which so. I can to help me be even more successful. I know setting goals will help me be even more successful, but I consider myself successful for all the good things that you're mentioning, right? Mm-hmm. I go in the community. I want to help, right? I want mm-hmm. to have a purposeful job that I'm actually helping someone, that I'm doing things that I love. So to me, that's successful. I could set goals to say, oh, this year I'm going to donate so much money, so I'm going to save this much. Or this year I'm going to volunteer at five different organizations, things like that. Those are different goals I could set. So do you think considering yourself, do you think like considering yourself already successful from the get-go? Like because I have these morals and values that were instilled in me and because I live my life in like a righteous way, I'm a success. Does that idea of yourself help you achieve more goals, do you think, or no? Do you think they're separate? It helps me consider myself successful if I do those things that makes me happy, that do the things that 
I want to do. Like, oh, wow, well, this year I really haven't supported any community organization or I haven't really given my time to any organization out there. I can say I was in, it was a very successful year because maybe I'm telling myself, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. But if it's a year that I'm super busy because I'm doing so much, then I thought like, oh, it was a very successful year. You know, we've had three shows, a parade, and, you know, or I went to the food pantry or I got so many students, different internships that I consider success. Okay. Without so your idea. Specific yes. Yeah. So your idea of success doesn't necessarily tie to achieve, setting and achieving goals. It's no. basically you being a well-rounded, good person. Who is doing what they want to do. You're actually achieving what you want to achieve. Okay. It makes sense, people. Don't act like it, though. <laughs> I mean, again, everybody's going to have their own idea of success. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you would consider yourself a successful person in order to achieve goals, or you feel like you need to achieve goals in order to be a successful person. It's all yeah. on how you look at success. I'm kind of in line with you where I don't need to achieve goals to be successful. I think, you know, going to the next piece of our conversation is happiness. Like as long as I'm happy... I'm successful and that's independent of goals. Like goals is just, I don't know. I wouldn't say like a materialistic thing to me, but goals is like kind of like an extra. It's like a bonus. You know what I mean? Like I can be it's successful and happy. Not really a tool, but it's just a way of attaining more. It's a way of making giving sure myself. You, attain, you get it done. Yeah. And that's feeling goal is making sure it's like the tool that will help you get the success you want if we want to no, tie these to, words not together. to me like i'm but, a success regardless if i have or i don't have what correct. i want as an individual as like individually or just the word success you are but i'm saying to be to say oh if i set a goal and i achieve it then that was a success but if you set a goal and you don't achieve it then you could say oh, it wasn't a very successful it's still a goal. success because failures are learning yeah. opportunities very true. It's your mindset, girl. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's no. I'm not saying that's how I am. I'm just saying no. I know. We can tie them to just the word goal. We could tie it to success. As when do you know it's it was a success? Oh, when you actually achieved it. So it was not a success because you didn't achieve. Just when it comes to goal, right? But does that happiness or is that personal, you know, fulfillment in a way? Then. Then I would have been bad because I don't set any goals. So that's why I don't tie them. You know what I mean? Like you don't need goals to be successful. Right. So do you need to be successful to be happy? What is successful? Well, we already defined success. I know, but like that's the thing. It all depends. Successful to be happy. Successful in what to be happy? You just need to be happy to be able to reach success of any kind. Because if you're a sad person, a crazy person with different goals and you achieve your goals, but you're still a miserable person, then you're not, there's not happiness there, goal achieved or not. If you're not happy, there's no, you know. What is happiness? Happiness is when you get to do the things you love to do. When you have the freedom and capability to do the things that you want, I think that's what happiness is. Peace of happiness. That's not all happiness. It's just, you know. Well, Google says happiness is having a sense of confidence in or satisfaction with either a person, an arrangement, or situation. So it's having confidence and satisfaction. Yeah. So you're happy with the things that you're doing. You're, you're capable to do those things. So that is happiness. Because let's say if I wanted to be able to, I'm going to go back to community, to go donate my time to a place and I wasn't able to, I could be sad, right? That I'm not able to get there or there's a job I want I'm not able to get it that can make me sad but aren't those feelings temporary I'm talking about like overall when you look at your life overall when you tie happiness with goals no I'm just looking at happiness on its own like you know how you'll interact with different people and you'll know that that's a genuinely happy person Mm -hmm. like we have a definition for happiness right yeah I'm just thinking about like overall like your quality of life like some people you every time you see them every time you interact with them you know they're happy people right Mm -hmm. but then there are those that are you know they're miserable people like they're just not happy no matter miserable people with all those accomplished too right that's what i'm saying no no matter what kind of job they have what kind of car they drive you know no matter what they're just 
miserable people. And I think happiness is the mindset, right? It's not what you have. It's not what you do. It's not what you achieve. It's not what you accomplish. It's how you view things like, and you'll know talking to people or being in meetings, you'll know based on how they respond to like issues. Like, are they looking at it from a, a complaining standpoint? Are you hearing them complain a lot? Are you hearing them bringing up the negative or are they trying to like think of a solution or are they trying to find the positive in the situation? You know what I mean? If you're a happy person, you're not going to dwell on the negative things that come into your life or that you deal with. Of course, you're going to acknowledge, okay, this is not a good situation. I'm not in a good place, but what can I do? How can I get better? Like, you got to have that positive mindset. Like, there's no way you're a happy person and all you do is complain all day. <laughs> true. So I don't really tie happiness to goals. Like, yes, if I achieve a goal, that's like a little extra for me. But, but it even if your happiness, it'll boost it a little bit yes, more. Okay. But even if I don't achieve goals, and again, this is not how I've always been. Obviously, these are things I had to learn along the way. Like if I don't get what I want or, you know, I go for something and it doesn't happen for me, temporarily I'll be sad, I'll be upset, I might be angry, whatever the case may be, but I know those feelings for me are temporary because I want to be a happy person. I strive to be a happy person. Like I know you're going to live your best life if you are if you focus on being a happy person. That's true. I um I see happiness as definitely something that is can be worked on but a lot of it is it's I don't know it's just how you receive appreciate and work with what you have right some people they could have everything they want and still not be happy so but but do you think they're not they're not happy because they don't have everything they want or they're not honest with themselves with what they actually want I think it's they're not happy because they're they're not doing the internal work or even understand what true happiness is. They might have everything they want because they think that's what's going to bring them happiness, accumulating all these things, for example, when it comes to material. But knowing that happiness has nothing to do with accumulating stuff or setting goals and achieving things. And that's not even that. You can achieve like that wealth status and then still be very unhappy. Right. And we see that all the time in our community, in the news, people who are so well and then go and commit this crazy nonsense crimes. But you're like, Mm -hmm. why? You have a home, you have a beautiful family. But if you're not happy, that all that stuff don't matter, right? If you're not inside happy, none of that's going to matter. Yeah. And you said it, it's really doing that internal work going within. Hey, we haven't said that yet. We haven't said that yet. Have we? (laughs) Going within. Yes. No. I what, think we've, what, we've accomplished that. Goals are just like different perspectives, ways of looking at things, dealing with things that helps you get what you want, that helps you get the happiness that you want and become no, the successful I person that to, you want. Right. But I want people to look at it the other way. I don't want you to think a goal is going to make me successful, which is then going to make me happy. I want you to focus on your happiness. Too, Once you but focus, I'm just saying a goal, though, helps you, though, focus on no. your happiness. No? You don't think so? Um, it's like a little reminder. Yeah, I, yeah, it could be. But I want you to first, I want you to focus on your happiness and use goals to help. Not think that that goal is what's going to give you happiness. Yeah. Happiness can be achieved with or without goals, with or without living up to other people's standards. You know what I mean? Like you have to know who you are. You have to go within and I'm going to say it. We have to overcome our trauma because, you know, as little or as big as you think you have or don't have, there are a lot of things, a lot of crazy things. The reality of this world is it's not a pretty world. It's not, there's a lot of bad things in this world and directly or indirectly, we are affected by those things. So we ha- have to constantly be doing that internal work to work, you know, look past that and see this world for what it could be, for what it is, you know, like the beautiful nature and the beautiful people and that we are beautiful. We have to see that for ourselves, within ourselves achieve that happiness Mm -hmm. and maintain that happiness because again you're going to get disappointed you're going to get angry people are going to do things to you that are going to hurt you and it's okay you know that's a part of life but deep down your true state of being should be happy happiness be happy for other people you know wish good on others wish good on yourself 
not wish, but speak it, speak, speak, it. Happiness, yeah. speak, speak health, speak wealth, speak inspiration and unto yeah. others and to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I like goal to have every day speak something inspiring to yourself. Positive. But yeah. So I like to month. see it. Happiness, success, goals. Sorry. Happiness, success, goals. Success, yeah. goals. Not well, goals. Success. Yeah. When I think of goals, it's not I need the goals to get the happiness. I just see the goals as a way to achieve Enhance. that thing that I want that's going to make me happy. Either, either no, nothing's going to make you happy. Oh, you make girl, you happy. if I can go a whole <laughs> month eating healthy because I set a goal to do and I do it, that's going to make me super happy. That's what I mean. Not like a happy but person. Do you see I'm already a happy the, person, but I'll right, be but happier when I know that see, I did it. Do you see what the common denominator is there? No, it's that you. you yeah. You so are not, the common no, denominator. Again, I'm not saying I need to set goals to, ach- I mean, I don't need to achieve goals to be happy. I would uh, uh, set goals because I know when I do achieve what I want, I'm going to be happy or <laughs> going to make me very happy when I do. So there's levels goals. to happiness? There's ha- levels to happiness now? No doubt. Why not? Mm, okay. Break it down for me. There's Bring it down. Levels of happiness. There's, um, Different types of happiness, being happy with yourself, being happy with your Others. health, being happy with your relationships, with your job. So all of that have factors that's going to play into it. Some of them you don't need to set any goals because you're, if you're a happy person, you get up in the morning, just saying good morning to yourself makes you happy. Perfect. But if you're a person that if you don't go get that half an hour run before you start your day and it makes you miserable, then make sure you set a goal to do that half an hour run because it's going to make you happier all day you know but not overall happiness like oh you have such a sad person because i can't save a thousand dollars or you know not like that just be but there are people like that people. that one little thing that doesn't go their way affects their whole being their whole, their whole yeah. mood yeah. yeah definitely do you um what is your life goal do you have a life goal <sighs> yeah to be happy every day wake up every day happy and blessed and fulfilled I think I mean I recognize I recognize that life is a journey and that Mm -hmm. you know even though you may set a goal and you're going to achieve it or you don't achieve it there's always going to be something else to strive for so I understand that that life is can be a journey of multiple goals different goals various goals but that's not the purpose of life no my purpose is to be happy and to enjoy what I'm experiencing every day yep. so I don't have like a this I, if I don't do this in my life then my life was a waste you know what I mean like I don't I don't see it that way and so you I know you're already happy and I know you have many p- different plans and there's going to be more but like for example like maybe I'll answer the question first like my life but my life goal is to always keep striving to understand better this process of what life is and live it more efficiently, learn ways to live it more efficiently from simple things to, you know, taking care of yourself, doing your going within, learning that. But then um, I want to make sure that it's not just that, it's everything else. That's my life goal is to like, grasp a rational sense of how to understand what life is, live life. And to carry on my duties and more effectively. Yeah, that that's not me. No. <laughs> no. I thought that's what you were saying when you were kind of when I asked mm-hmm. you, do you have like a life goal? So no, narrow down your life I'm, goal real quick again. So when you described your life goal, it just seemed like never ending sort of quest to understand what life is. And like you said, like to learn and grow and find ways to make things better for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Did I recap that correctly? Like I want to grasp a rational understanding of life. Yeah. So you feel like you're on your way there or you, Mm -hmm. but I might, I want to strive to always learn better ways to make things more effective, to make my Mm -hmm. life more work better, be better. Okay. Yeah, like I feel like in a sense, I agree with you. Like, of course, I always want better for myself, but I don't want to constantly feel like I'm working towards that. I want that to be easeful and to be natural 
and just like when I'm faced with decisions or like when I have an idea of something that I want to accomplish, like I just want to flow into it and naturally move towards it. I don't want to force anything. Again, this is just me at this point in my yeah, life. Because like, I don't want you to think the way I want to force anything. It's just I'm not force, yeah. but like I want it to be easeful. Like I don't want to work hard. But what? How much really hard work is trying to learn what, what like the per my purpose in life or it's perception. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, find, I, I, th- I find that very easy and breezy. So to you, like yeah. for me, like I like okay, like if I have to like go to this three day conference to mm-hmm. sit in a classroom mm-hmm. and take all these notes, like to me that's hard work. Like I just want to naturally grasp the information. I want to naturally have a conversation with someone that's very educated and I'm, you know, into what they're yeah. saying and and then I learn from that rather mm-hmm. than have to sit in an institution and you know what I mean? Like yeah, and now I don't want about to it, like, do that either. I don't want to like have like trainings and things. I want yes. to just I want like every decision I make in my life to like every journey I decide to go on to feel like it's the right thing for me and to naturally be into those things. When Like when we're in school, for instance, like when we're in college and we're learning a lot of times, like 90% of the things that they're teaching us, we don't care about. We don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, we have to do it because we have to do it. Mm-hmm. you know and I don't want my learning and my journey in this world to be that like I get it some things are gonna feel like work yes like if you know you're learning a new skill but it's a skill that I want to know so it's not gonna feel like work you know what I mean I don't know if I'm explaining myself right but you are it's um, just, like my question was you know a life a life goal don't overthink the word goal like yeah, no, I know Which what you mean by that. Like a but life like, oh, aspiration, like an, for example, then. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like for me, it's as basic as just being happy. It's just you when I wake up in the morning happy. till I go to bed, I live a happy, fulfilled, fulfillment, I guess then. Mm-hmm. Not just happy. Happy is like the byproduct of how we live our lives. But then are you... Fulfillment. Do you have a measuring thing for fulfillment at- or you just feel How, fulfilled as is. Look, if I you get up every day, you're happy. I'm happy. Yeah. Like my happiness is my measurement. Mm-hmm. Like my you know mood, what? You may ask some my people, feelings. Like, what would be like your life goal for you to feel fulfilled? Some people like, oh, it's when my children gives me grandchildren mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. at my retirement home and they come spend time and things like that, right? I teach what I have. Do you have those? You're too young No, that, because I maybe. don't. <laughs> It's coming. No, I know though. what you're saying. Like some women, for instance, or men, it's like to be married or to have a great job, to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, to have mm-hmm. a BMW. Like I've, you know, I know what you're saying. I'm not that person. Like yeah. if I have those things, yes, I'll I'll be very happy and very grateful. But I've learned to be happy no matter what. Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, I can go buy myself a BMW today if I want to, but I don't be. Because I know that doesn't make me happy. I was just going to say, you know what I mean? it's funny because I can, like me, if you were to ask me, what would be like, you would feel fulfilled of happiness is the older I get, a simpler life I want, lesser things I want. Like, yes. I don't want two cars. I just. Like, I'm, I'm literally going to be decluttering my drawer and one of my shelves today. A shelf? To organize better. A shelf. Oh, and to organize it because I know that's going to make me happy. Yeah, right. You're going to feel you know fulfilled, I mean? accomplished. Exactly. And that's um, when I said I don't set goals, but little things I've been telling myself, you're going to do this, you're going to do this because it's going to bring you some more happiness is like decluttering, um, taking better care of my plants or trying to be mm-hmm. clean or try to not nag so much. Like, let's get real here. Like, I've been yeah. working hard on setting goals to. Listen more and don't nag so much because it's the same thing I'm nagging over and over again. When it comes to, you know, when you have kids and husbands and family, it's like, don't nag, mm-hmm. you know? And as mothers and wives, we, we can don't do yell. All that. Like yelling, nagging, complaining, it's all the same. But that's, if I have to set a goal right now that I want to do that, I want to set a goal to do less of that. Because what? Because I know I have proof that it brings me more inner peace. And it actually, I have been called like before growing up, wrong woman in my house but if I knew somebody was coming over it was it kind of brought a little bit like I have to clean 
Like really, you know, you don't. Your house is mm-hmm. fine, you know. Mm-hmm. Or my mother, if I'm relaxing on the couch and she's walking in, I'm getting up because I was <laughs> brought up to think women don't set up on the on the couch with their legs up to relax. You could be mm-hmm. cooking. You could be doing something. Like I'm telling myself, you don't could be doing nothing. You mm-hmm. just need to relax, let things flow. You know, be happy yeah. without trying to please other people or doing things like you mentioned earlier for other mm-hmm. people. Letting go of other people's expectations. And and to be honest, I, I, some people do have those expectations. Like you said, like, you don't want your mother seeing you, uh, you know, lounging on the couch. But like, nobody cares if they come over your house and you got a little bit of dust here and there. Like My mother cares. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm excluding her because mm-hmm. we know she's a special person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's true. Like, mm-hmm. nobody cares. Everybody has their own things that they're dealing with, their own issues that they have. They're not thinking yeah. about you in that way. They're not losing sleep because you didn't clean your house when they went over. You know or even I mean? if like, I was to take the person out and me, even it, sometimes it was a me thing. Like Right. That's what I'm saying. It, it's you, you thinking yeah, that a, you're a bad thing. person or you're a dirty person because of that. You know what I'm saying? No one's thinking that no, you are labeling that. that on yourself. Yeah. No, I'm saying it me, it made me happier that it, let's say, oh, the girls are coming over to like clean the whole house would be make me happy to have people over. But now it's like, no, I don't need that to make to be happy. OK, you don't do it. Over. What does it make you? I'm getting better at letting it go. Letting but like, how would you feel if you don't if you didn't clean the whole house? Like, how would it make you feel? I've been practicing. It's making me feel better. For example, like before no, I would never before, go to bed without washing the dishes. Right. I would never. How go would you to feel? Sleep. I would feel horrible going to bed right, and I would feel order? horrible getting up and doing it. But now not so much. Let's say now I go to sleep and there's some sh- dishes in the sink. When I get up in the morning, I don't feel bad like I used to feel before. I actually tell myself, now you can wash them. You didn't wash them at night. Right. Not, you know what I mean? But trust me, that's all be that's all been things that I've been working on in that path of me deciding what happiness really is. You know, as I used to see that as happiness before. Because I was brought up to think th- things have to be a certain way. But now happiness to me is doing things my way and understanding that. Or doing what that makes you feel good. good. Yeah, understanding. In the moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's got to be a balance. Like, yeah, sometimes you have to push yourself to do certain things that you don't mm-hmm. want to do. But at what cost? <laughs> what cost for your mental health, for your sanity? Yeah. Is what you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I don't want to push myself. Again, it could just be the stage that I'm in. Maybe if I was 20, 21, it would be a different perspective because of the age that I was. But at this point in my life, and it could be because I've been able to achieve and accomplish so much over my life that I'm at this point that I can say, I don't want to work hard. I want an easeful life. I want a life that flows. You know, of course, I want to be challenged. I want to, you know, obviously continuously mentally, physically challenge myself, but in a good way, in a way that makes me feel good and not brings me, you know, sadness, depression, anger and all those things. Like I am beyond that. Like Mm -hmm. my happiness is my number one priority. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm not happy, people around me are not happy. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it is. That's it. What else about so, goals and happiness and success? I don't know. I think we... Are you successful? Recovered. Yes, I am. Are you going to be even more successful in the future? Of course. Duh. There's no stopping. So there is a level of success. Learning and growing. That you could, you're shooting for... Goal. Yeah, you like as you evolve, that, yeah. right, as you continue to do things, as you evolve, as you take action, you're going to reach different levels of success based on your definition like i'm successful right now my 40 year old self is successful based on my 20 year old self you know when i was 20 you were as successful as you are now no i'm saying like right because at that age my definition of success was what i was what i had now that i'm this age when I think of myself back then to see myself now, I would think I was a successful person. You know what I mean? That, and I think that's what happiness is, is whatever level or stage that you are in your life, consider yourself successful, you know, independent yeah. of goals that you have or not, you have accomplished or not. If happiness is when you can say, yes, I am successful or yes, I am a happy person. And like who you that's are. 
you have to like who you are. If you don't like yourself, you're not happy, you're not successful, you're not, you know what I mean? You can achieve you know, goals, yeah. but mm. you're not successful. It's very hard for anybody who don't like themselves to achieve goals sometimes. There's a lot of people, a lot of goals are big obstacles. People who achieve a lot of big goals. Yeah. Yeah. True. But to truly be successful, to truly be happy, you know, you got to be a good person. You got to you got to care about yourself and others. You have to understand mm-hmm. what who you are, what you want to yep. be happy. Yeah, it's a constant journey. The road to happiness. We're, we're always changing. Like something can happen to me today. Somebody can say something to me that might change my perspective on something. And now, oh, maybe I thought I wanted that. Now I don't. Well, I don't think I do anymore. And that can change my my direction in life. Mm-hmm. So, so many times I, be, I become happier when I drop an idea that this is what I need to do. This is the outcome I want for me to be happy. When I sometimes I become even more happy when I drop that idea or drop that whole project sometimes altogether. Mm-hmm. And I feel happy. I feel lighter. Things like that. And that goes to like alignment. Like when you think about everything you do in your life, everything you're a part of. Are you, uh, can you say you're 100% aligned to every task that you do throughout the day? No. And that's why my goal is to find ways, my daily life, to make sure I live my purpose better, you mm-hmm. know, because I can be more aligned, be more aligned to stay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right. I think we, we've, you know, beat that horse <laughs> hard enough. <laughs> is that the, the way you say it? Uh, you said beat the horse. Oh, my brain. <laughs> my, you know my brain. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. All those topics can have big, longer, broader conversation. But, it can be their yeah. own, you know. Yeah. But but I, I really wanted to show like how they're tied together and how they can be tied together, how they can be independent of each other. You know what I mean? Because, you know, especially those that think that they can only be happy and successful when they achieve goals. Like that's not true. Like, like yeah, you said, happiness is an inside true. job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we did a good job kind of talking through that. As you know, we did. I, of, we did. I, yeah. A lot of what we say is, you know, a lot of times we're just, we're feeding off each other and we're, we're learning in the moment and we're discovering things about ourselves as well. Like as we're talking through these topics. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that little discussion about goal success and happiness. Um, We would love to hear your feedback, your input, your views. Where can they find us, Vanilla? They can find us on all the different social media platforms, but pick one, pick your favorite that you listen to podcasts you can find us on YouTube if you want to see our beautiful faces. We're on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, you can and would love for there. you guys to interact with us on social media like Instagram, TikTok, TikTok Facebook. Yeah. And my takeaway or my thriving, thriving. point for today would be um, to let us all strive to. Think well, have positive thoughts. And I think just striving to think well and having positive thoughts is a great way to achieve the things you want in life. It's a good way to definitely a good place to start. Do you have a giveaway thriving point or is it a giveaway? (laughs) So my thriving takeaway is yeah, to focus on your happiness. If you're feeling stuck. If you're feeling like you're not in a happy place right now, to really take that time to whatever your process is, you know what I mean? Like some people turn to meditation, some people turn to religion, some people turn to exercise, some people turn to a therapist, you know, some people turn to journaling, whatever your method of sort of going within and analyzing yourself is to use that to focus on being happy so that you can do the things that will make your life more fulfilled and enjoyable. Um, Not necessarily success, not necessarily goals. Those will come, but really just focus on the happiness, being a happy person, and you will start to see your life change.
And that was Naya with her takeaway was the entire podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> I did a summary. Yeah. Summary, perfect. Right? Mm. Yeah. So. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed that and we're so happy to be back and we cannot wait for our next conversation. Yeah. So please right. tune in and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>